everybody, my top five, bottom five series continues today and we're focusing on Too Faced. I noticed a lot of requests for Too Faced in my last video and I think it's a very appropriate brand for me to feature here because I have tried nearly everything in Too Faced line and I'm going to be talking about things that are currently available. I'm not going to be bringing discontinued products into the mix just because it's kind of frustrating, you know, when someone raves on and on about something nobody can get their hands on anymore. So let's get started top five best products. Number five, I'm going to go with the Brow Envy Kit. I've raved about this for years. I think it's a really strong brow kit because of its universal appeal. You know, the shades in here, you're getting a couple of brow powders plus uh, wax and also like a creamy highlight type product. But both of the shades in here, blonde and brunette, as you can see, I'm definitely a brunette, um, but I have hit pan on that blonde shade. They're both very cool toned and I've loved combining them both in my brows, you know, maybe using a lighter shade a little bit more toward the inner part, deepening it up toward the outside. That's what, just what works for me. What I'll do is just use the little brush provided. I use everything in this kit. Um, the tweezers might be the only thing I didn't love in this kit, but you know, you can use your own tweezers. There's a little spoolie brush as well, but I use the angled brush. I go into the wax and just kind of, you know, get the brows prepared to receive the powder. And um, then the powder really sticks in, locks in and wears well all day. Even this highlight, I've had this for a long time. This is not dried out on me. And it's matte, so that can be a really nice thing to, you know, take right along the edge of your brows when you're done and really perfect that line, you know? Or you could use it as a base on the eye area around your inner corner. I actually think this also might come with some stencils, and I've just taken them out so I can use that mirror there. But it's a really nice all-encompassing brow palette. If you're unsure of shades, if you're unsure of, like, what textures work good in brows, powders are always, I think, pretty much a no-brainer. Number four, a blush that I love from Too Faced line. I just think this is amazing. I've talked about it quite a few times before, but it's the Sweethearts Perfect Flush Blush, and the shade is called Peach Beach. And I think the packaging is absolutely adorable. And then you look at the product inside, and it's a stunning blush. It's really great. It's three shades in one. Uh, you're going to have shimmer in all of this product, but I still think these two colors here, this is what I use as my blush, those two. And it's kind of a soft, like neutral pink. And then I use this as the glowy highlight. So that's what I've done today. You know, I've got my blush shades right here, the highlight on top of it. The more I continue to use this, the more it reminds me of different products I have from Laura Geller, because you can see in there, it's kind of domed up. And I've used this product so much, but I swear it's not going anywhere. It doesn't appear that the powder has worn down much at all. My number three product from Too Faced is a palette. They have so many good palettes. This was really, really hard for me to figure out what I was gonna put as part of just a top five from this brand, because there are many palettes that I love. But um, something that they really recently came out with is just top notch for my personal preferences at least. Not everybody may love what's in this palette, but I absolutely do. It's the peanut butter and jelly palette. Brand new thing that they've come out with. These colors are my jam. I have for a long time enjoyed the pairing of peachy shades with plum. And here it's like you're getting that idea, but then with all these warm browns that pair so surprisingly beautifully alongside this plum color, you've got a purple that's a little bit brighter. I will tell you if you want that to stay stand out and reach its fullest potential, put a purple base, like a cream shadow base underneath that because it's a really reflective type purple. Then you've got your deeper plum over there. Um, this is really all based around the very popular peanut butter shade from the Semi-Sweet palette. So they put that color in here, the one that's just straight up called peanut butter, and then all these fun things to pair with it. I saw recently Alexandria Garza did a beautiful tutorial with this palette, not using Using the purples. Well, I guess she popped the purple on at the end to show you an option that way, but she incorporated this bananas color, and I hadn't used it yet, but I was like, wow, that's awesome. That looked really pretty on the lid along with all the warm browns. If you're more so a lover of cool colors and cool browns, 
this may not be your cup of tea, but I absolutely adore what they've done with this. And it's definitely a big deal for it to jump into a top five and pass up the other chocolate bar palettes, which I think all have their strengths. The um, regular chocolate bar, the semi-sweet, the Bon Bons palette. I mean, there are so many great palettes. Ugh. My number two Too Faced product has got to be the Chocolate Soleil Medium um, Matte Bronzer. I have loved it for many years and it's kind of rediscovered for me right now because I feel like I've used a lot of different bronzers over let's say the past few months and I've more recently been breaking this out for both the contour I contoured with it today it's just an ideal tone for me and I do like how they've expanded the chocolate soleil range with the milk chocolate which is lighter even cooler and then an even deeper one as well but my personal favorite for my skin is the medium slash deep matte bronzer is what it's called it smells amazing smells like chocolate this smells great by the way too. My number one Too Faced product is another eye palette and it's the Natural Matte. They've had the Natural Eye which has been around longer. It's a beautiful palette too. Um, it's gone through a packaging change and also a change of a couple of the shades inside. But more recently they put out the Natural Matte palette. Very well thought out assortment of colors in here because you've got your most basic cool matte row up top. Then you've got warmer browns to work with down here in the bottom. And then, you know, for me, I love this kind of rosy shade in here, a grayish plum. This is actually a really unique color. If you like matte shadows, this is one of the best. The textures are really awesome. I feel like for years, Too Faced was getting, um, kind of making a name for itself shadow-wise with the sparkly, really shimmery, highly frosty shades. And then, you know, different palettes that they would put out, I would note time and time again how the matte shades were really creamy and rich and nicely textured textured, easy to blend. They practically, I feel silly saying this, but they practically blend themselves on the eye. Like they're so easy to work with. And so I think it was great that they took advantage of that great formula they had, put it all into one palette. Natural matte is the perfect name for it because these are all going to give you a somewhat natural look. Your deepest shade is not black. You know, if you're uncomfortable wearing a lot of, you know, black or really, really dark blackish brown shades, this shade called Sexpresso is not that intimidating to work with, in my opinion. Now, if you want a matte palette that really takes you there with the deepest, darkest options, I also adore the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Palette. This, I think, is an equally great eyeshadow formula, just a little softer take on the colors. So for my look today, I've got Heaven on the inner part of my lid and under the brow. I've got Strapless in the crease, Risqué in the outer corner, and also just a little bit of this Honey Butter shade, like kind of blended up, just like a transition color. And then Cashmere Bunny is absolutely great for a soft lower lash line. Like if you want the softest definition on that area, but when you look up really closely, it's almost undetectable. It's a really sneaky lower lash line color, but I love using it there. I know I said the peanut butter and jelly, you know, that might not be everyone's favorite thing because I think the colors are very specialized. They really go into a certain avenue with those very warm browns. This is the kind of thing I think nearly everyone could pick up and find looks in here that they love. Moving on to the bottom five. So the worst products in my opinion from Too Faced, number five would be this um, no filter selfie powders palette. I thought this was a really kind of gimmicky concept. They're just very sheer um, slightly shimmery powders that you can use to top off your different looks. This is Sunrise, this is Totally Toasted, this is Moon River. They claim that it would have the look of different filters almost on top of your skin. Here's the little examples of that. I mean, it's cute, it's kind of a fun idea, but getting down to the, just the practical way these look on the skin, I didn't think any of them had enough of an effect. Of the three, I think the Totally Toasted color um, does look kind of pretty, just lightly dusted all over your face. But still, there are a lot of sheer bronzers out there that would be cheaper that could do what that does. When it first came out, I think a lot of people were interested in it, but it's just, it's not holding my attention. Number two, and I believe this was in my worst products of 2015 video, but the Too Faced Melted Metal, particularly the lighter shades in this line, they come off very frosty on the lips. They can make the lips look more dry, more packed with creases, and all the things you don't want to see on your lips. The regular melted line of liquid 
liquid lipsticks I think has a lot of gorgeous shades. There are even um, a couple of pretty colors in the deeper tones of the metal collection, but the lighter metal shades I think you got to be very careful with because they can make your lips look very aged even if they're not. Number three in my bottom five would be the Too Faced Lip Injection Color Bombs. These are like um, a jumbo lip pencil type format. The shade I have here is called Bee Sting. And the issue with these is all about the feel on the lips. I don't think a lip product should have to feel uncomfortable to get the job done. You know what I'm saying? These sting a little bit. They're a little bit numbing. I applied this just to kind of refresh my memory earlier this morning and I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, it's not worth it. There are enough good lip products, high-end or drugstore, that are gonna look gorgeous on your lips and not give you an unpleasant experience at the same time. And I just, I hate that numbing feeling. I can take a little tingle, like from the Buxom lip glosses. I think those actually feel kind of cooling. With this, it's just kind of stingy and a little bit painful. Number two in my bottom five would be the Better Than False Lashes system. This really disappointed me. I felt like I had gorgeous lashes lashes the first couple of times I used this and basically it's a regular mascara and then on this side you've got the loose fibers and I think just in my last video I was talking about how Milani has come out with some loose fibers like this that you can kind of sandwich between your two coats of regular mascara and I think what was happening here and something you should be aware of with any um, lash fiber that you're adding on to the tips of your lashes when you get some of that on your regular mascara wand and then you go dipping it back down into your tube and closing it up, you're slowly changing the formula of the mascara. And that's what was happening here, I think, to make me dislike this the more I used it because this was getting more and more clumpy, more and more unnatural looking on the eyes. If you're really eager to try loose fibers on your eyelashes, you might go for a cheaper option like the Milani. See what you think of it, but I think a big problem with the concept is just the fact that you're getting another mascara involved with this and you're slowly changing up the formula. My number one least favorite product from Too Faced would be this three-way lash lining tool. Could never really get the point of this product. It's like a little um, eyeliner fork. <laughs> it's got the three itty bitty felt tip points. If you were to draw a line, you know, you get three distinct um, tracks of color there. But I think the idea is that you can get in really close to your lashes and almost like dab it right in there within the lash line. And to me, I don't, there might be some people who love this concept, but I'm just thinking, you know, give me a regular pointed felt tip or brush tip eyeliner and let's leave it at that. You know, I don't need any changes. I feel like if it's a fine enough tip and a flexible enough tip, it will do the job across the lash line. And when I would try to, you know, kind of trace it across like a normal liner, it was hard to get the proper thickness of line that I was looking for. I don't want to seem too crotchety as I sit here and say like, don't change the eyeliners, keep them the same. It's just not a thing that I think needs to be reinvented in the makeup world. Maybe something brands could focus more on is how to keep these pen form eyeliners more saturated and not drying out as quickly and innovations in that way. But a nice, fine, flexible tip, be it a brush tip or a felt tip, is one of the best things you can work with, I think. That is my top five, bottom five from Too Faced. I would have a couple of honorable mention products, things I really, really love, but it was hard. It was hard to narrow this down to a top five and I put it on myself because I came up with this video idea for myself. But there have been a couple of really nice nude lip products that I've loved from Too Faced. This Melted Nude, I think, is a really nice kind of tan type nude, a little bit deeper. At first, I was a little scared by this shade, but the more I wore it, the more I realized it really did suit my skin tone and looks beautiful. And then for a soft nude lipstick, the La Creme Lipstick in Nude Beach. This is a fabulous formula, by the way. It's a very glossy, like, kind of lip gloss and lipstick in one is kind of what it looks like on your lips because it's so shiny and creamy. Very luxurious feel. And the shade Nude Beach I think is an ideal nude shade with just that little bit of pinky peach thing going on in there. And even more recently, like just now, I got these in like a couple days ago, they've come out with the La Matte 
collection and I am wearing the shade called Sorry Not Sorry and it's kind of reminding me in depth of Melted Nude, maybe just a little more pink in the color that's on my lips, but these have been very comfortable. The few shades I've tried so far have been great. But I will most likely have more to come on these and more to come on the Peanut Butter and Jelly palette, but thank you guys so much for watching these videos. I'm glad you enjoy them and I'll see you soon. Bye.